Yes! Boom! Camo dust, baby. What's going on, guys? It's Clifton Denny with On Your Own Outdoors. It is Wednesday, November 3rd, and we just set out heading to Missouri to uh, chase some public land bucks. So, um, anyways, any of y'all that haven't been following the weather, there's a big cold front moving across the nation, and we are trying hard to uh, get to Missouri to be on the front end of that cold front to uh, see what these deer are doing. So, anyways, I've this is my second trip to Missouri. Um, I went early season, did some early season scouting, um, dropped a bunch of bent, uh, pins on a topographic map. Um, from now on, I'm going to call it a topo map. I hope everybody understands what I'm talking about. But uh, anyways, I did a bunch of preseason scouting, um, or early season scouting rather. I found some pretty decent spots. Um, man, there's a big acorn crop this year, so it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult early season. Um, for myself to pinpoint these deer plus if you've ever hunted south missouri you'd understand that all the public land is surrounded you'll have a block here block there block here and it's surrounded by uh private land fields and those kind of things so what i was running into early season was most of the bucks were you know bedding right on the edge of this private ground and moving onto the private ground and so anyways i don't i don't like messing with landowners and stuff having to get permission to get on their property to get deer so I just chose to kind of stay out of some of these areas whenever I was down there early season. So um, knowing that this cold front was coming, I started last week uh, reading the topo map and trying to figure out where I wanted uh, to start at, try to try to ambush one, right? And so anyways, um, <laughs> just like everybody else, I'm on social media, I'm watching all these pages and I'm seeing that um, in Missouri, a lot of people are seeing a lot of, you know, not chasing yet but a lot of following of does bucks cruising and that kind of thing so anyways um i've got like three spots picked out that uh that are real good saddles um i like to set up kind of below the saddle usually that ridge top is where their uh scrapes and and such are and i like to kind of set up down below that try to try to give that buck the wind and see if i can um if i can beat him long enough to get an arrow in him so anyways we uh I got everything loaded down. I have I have slept, eat, and uh, breathe that topo map for the last week, trying to <laughs> trying to figure out where I want to go. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm on my way. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, this weekend we can get it done. We'll see what happens. The weather's going to be perfect. Um, the leaves are dropping. It seems like it could be a recipe for disaster. So. Anyways, guys, stick with me. We're heading to Missouri. Let's see if we can get it done. Proceed to the route. Proceed to the route. Morning number two in Missouri. It's early. I'm tired. Uh, but we found that spot yesterday that... Uh, yesterday morning rather that had all those does on it so i don't know man it seems like it's that time of year if the does are moving through there it's just a matter of time anyway we uh as you can see i don't know if you can see that or not but it's 452 so we've got a solid i don't know two hours before daylight the, uh, the tree I'm going to this morning, I know I've got to do a bunch of cutting in, so um, trimming some limbs. So anyways, we had to try to get out here a little bit early today, but anyways, so here we go.
like it. She might think it's too damn easy for you today. So it is, let me figure out where I ditched my phone. It's Friday, November 5th, um, about 7.05 in the morning. Uh, I've been at this tree since six o'clock. Yesterday morning I ended up seeing 13, right around nine to 9.30. Uh, nine of which crossed right through this area, so. I, uh, when I got down yesterday, I moved over here to see what I could find. The problem is, is it's an old tornado blow. There's no trees. So, um, as you can tell, how small this tree is that I'm on. I'm up about probably 16 foot. I don't like it. I like to be 20 plus, but there's not a tree out here I can get 20 plus in, except for one back behind me. And the way my wind is blowing. It's coming out of the northwest. It's supposed to be northern, but either way, there's a trail coming right underneath that big tree. And if I would have got on it, my wind would have been blowing straight down it. So um, I went with the only choice I had, and it's not a very good one. So anyways, um, there's a stand of trees right here in front of me, pines probably 25 foot tall. And that's what those deer were using to move through this yesterday. Seems like it's not as thick where the patches of trees are, so I've got a good trail over here to the north of me. Actually, I've got two trails to the north of me. One's a nice rub line. I've got another one here over my shoulder that runs this ridge line. And then under those big trees I was talking about that are back behind me, there's uh, three fresh scrapes and a couple fresh rubs over there, so we're in a good spot, just in a real bad tree. I hit butted a tree this morning. <laughs> It took me about an hour to get 16 foot up this tree because there is a limb every six inches. I would say that we're safe on seeing deer for at least an hour because I probably blew everything out of here. As thick as this is though, I originally thought it was a bedding area. So I wasn't gonna mess with it. Come to find out these deer aren't bedding in here. They're actually bedding to the north of me and uh, in a pine thicket, so anyhow. We've got some horns, we've got a grunt call. It's like 26 degrees this morning. It's beautiful out here. So we're gonna ride it out and see if we can make some out.
Camo dust, baby. Directly downwind. God! This! Chris. Yeah. All you, baby. I just shot a hammer. Dead downwind. Really? Dead downwind. That's why I use camo dust, baby. <laughs> <laughs> my man. Oh my god. My man. I uh I got it I got to the base of my tree at like five forty five. I finally got set up at seven o'clock. Daylight. Yes sir. Right I mean ten minutes before daylight. And so anyways, yeah. dude, I was sitting here and I was like, there's no way in hell. Clifton shot a hammer. Clifton shot a hammer. Yes. On film, 27 yards. On film at 27 <laughs> yards straight down with you. Yes. I was, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. I was sitting here and I kept hearing stuff. And I was like, there's a deer close. You know what I mean? And yeah. so anyways, <laughs> I, you know I'm deaf. So I pulled my... I pull my beanie up so I can hear good. And uh, and anyhow, I hear it again. I look over and all I see is tines at like 50 yards. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> he's gonna cross me at 47, which if you don't know this, like I, t I talk about 40 to 50 yards is my sweet spot. I'm like, I'm fixing to punch him right in the heart. And then he turns and comes straight at me. <laughs> all right guys, I wanna show y'all something. So, <sighs> that's a good deer. I'm, I'm extremely happy, but. Anyways, look at this. I am busted up. I don't know which eye it is. I'm gonna have a black eye. So, there's a lesson to be learned out of this. Go to where the deer are. So yesterday I set up 80 yards from here. Well, from where I'm sitting. Sorry, I'm shaking. God, I'm excited. Man, this is why we do it right here. So, anyhow, I set up yesterday um, about 120 yards from here. Um, I had some deer cross me at 80, 85. They were moving through this. This spot is where I dropped a pin at while I was sitting in Arkansas last week. And uh, I didn't I didn't come out here. Uh, yesterday, I went on past it. And so the deer I saw yesterday were moving through here. So I was like, oh no, I've gotta, I've gotta get over there. So anyways, today I come in. I got to the base of my tree at like 5.45, doesn't get daylight until after seven. Um, I knew it was gonna be a pain. This tree's tiny, I don't know if you can see it here. Um, every time I move, it shakes. It's not the perfect case scenario, but guys, you gotta go to where the deer are. And so anyways, I moved over here. My sister's boyfriend just texted me um, <laughs> asking some advice about hunting and hunting over scrapes. And I don't hunt over scrapes. I will hunt in the vicinity of them, but I don't hunt over them. And so anyways, I was literally in the middle of texting him to tell him if those scrapes are on a ridge to move about a quarter of the way down and catch that deer coming downwind of them. And as I'm typing that out, it happens. So anyways, yeah. I'm gonna ease over here and see if maybe I see a blood trail. All right, so my stand's over there. I'm about 10 yards from where the deer initially took off. And I don't know if you can see that there, but we've got very good blood spray.
All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, that's our first buck harvest of the year that we got on film. Um, I appreciate everybody for watching and hanging out with us uh, this long. So, anyways, this is uh, this is the European mount. This would be the Missouri buck. I just kind of wanted to do an end screen, show you guys um, <laughs> the end of it, right? So. He's not the biggest, but he's not going to get any bigger either, and he's going inside on a plaque. So anyways, guys, I appreciate y'all for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. The season's still young. We're just getting started. Good hunting, guys. We'll see y'all later in the week.